Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Derek. Today I'm gonna do another reaction and tutorial video for the song Blank Space by Taylor Swift. I had quite a few comments in my last video that I did of her uh, Cornelia Street performance to do the Grammy Museum series that she did. So it looks like she did acoustic renditions of her songs at the Grammy Museum. Blank Space is the first one that I found. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do that one today for you guys. I have heard this song, obviously, but I have not seen this uh, specific performance of, of the song. So I'm curious to see how she plays it here. And uh, thank you guys for all the comments in the last video. Keep them coming. Let me know in the comment section below what other songs you guys want me to do this with. And, uh, and I try to respond to as many as I can, but there's quite a few in the last video. So yeah, anyways, let's jump into the song. Um, so I wanted to start with a song that uh, I wrote actually as kind of a response to um, in the last couple of years the media have had a really wonderful fixation on kind of painting me as like the psycho serial dater girl. <laughs> it's been awesome. I've loved it. <laughs> and they're like, you know, it was, it got pretty out of control there for a couple of years because it would be like every article was like, Taylor Swift standing near some guy. Watch out, guy. <laughs> and it's true. You know, every single article was kind of like, um, had these descriptions of my personality. She's got that a Gibson very guitar. From the actual personality. And the first, my first reaction was to be like, nah, that's a bummer. This isn't fun for me. But then my second reaction ended up being like, hey, that's actually kind of a really interesting character they're writing about. Like, she jet sets around the world collecting men, and then, <laughs> and she can get any of them, and then, but she's so clingy that they leave, and she cries, and, <laughs> and then she gets another one in her web, and she traps them, and locks them in her mansion, and then she's crying in her marble bathtub surrounded by pearls. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, I can use this. It's called Blank Space. It is true. I mean, I, I know that in her most recent album that she she wrote a song that I also had a, quite a few requests for uh, called The Man. And I, I think she kind of addresses that that double standard that, that is put on her. I mean, for one, I can't imagine like what she goes through. I mean, you know, just like all the tabloids and, and what they write about her. I mean, it just must be exhausting. But um, hey, if it gives her material to write songs like this, then I guess there there's some trade offs there. Okay, so so far I can tell that the song is in the key of C sharp, but just like the uh, Cornelia Street performance, she puts her capo on the sixth fret in standard tuning just to get rid of some of those bar chords. Now, I saw a few comments in my last video that kind of talked about this where I had a few people saying, oh, you know, she's only playing four chords. Like, how can she be, you know, how can she be considered a good guitar player? And I guess my, my rebuttal to that would be, you know, being good at guitar has never been about how many chords you play in a song. To me, it's, Guitar playing is much more complex than just, hey, you played, you know, 10 chords and four of them were bar chords. Like, it's it's way more complex than that. I mean, there's there's picking involved, there's strumming involved, she's singing on top of that. I don't think it's uh, fair to boil it down to just, hey, she's only playing four chords. I mean, that may be true, but there's a lot of people that can play four chords on guitar, right? But they don't sound like that. So, yeah, I just thought that was an interesting comment. I, I mean, just already you can tell, like, 
the chords that she plays are super clean. You know, there's never any string buzz or anything like that. Like she, she knows what she's doing. And I have no doubt that she could play those bar chords, but probably for the sake of singing and, and just the overall performance, you want to make it as easy as possible on yourself when you're playing a song like this. And that's why she uses the capo, in, I think, in my opinion. So yes, yeah, she's capo six fret, standard tuning. And so far for the verse, she used the G chord. She went to this E minor. Then she went to the C, and then she went to this D. The interesting thing about these chords is that when you play them like she is, you can keep these two bottom fingers on the first and second string throughout the whole song, or throughout the whole verse. So if you look at my, my fingers, only the top two, these two, are really moving. So your, your third and fourth finger, your ring and your pinky finger, end up being kind of like an anchor finger during those chord changes. And then if we rewind this a little bit. Yeah, so like she's using a strumming pattern that's kind of something like So I think she's doing a little bit of muting, but the basic pattern is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. And I think she does that for the entire verse. But with her muting, it's kind of like. I know that's a little complex. I don't want to go completely into like how you mute uh, playing guitar. I think I'll, I'll make that a separate video, but she does do that quite a bit, I've noticed. She kind of mixes up her playing by. muting the strings with her right hand. So that's just something that I noticed she did throughout the verse there. Again, the chord progression is G, E minor, C to D. So if we rewind this here. So G. E minor. C. D. Same thing here. So actually, listening to that again, I don't know if she is doing the muting thing. She might just be doing like a... So just down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And I thought I knew my guy, look at their face. The next mistake, the next game, wanna play. Yeah, it's something like that. It's something like that, but um, don't worry too much about strumming pattern. It's 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 gonna be something like that. I'm sure she mixes it up throughout this song, but that's kind of the the basic pattern that she's playing. Yeah, I like that guitar too. I think that's a Gibson songwriter series guitar. I'm not exactly sure, but I do like that. So yeah, so for the chorus guys, pretty similar similar strumming pattern, but she did change up the strumming, or sorry, she did change up the chords there a little bit. So she went from G, 
So she goes, So it's gonna be forever, or it's gonna go down in flames. So what she did there is she kind of walks down to that E minor. So you really just go from the G, put your first finger on the, the sixth string of the second or the the sixth string of the second fret. Then you go to E minor. And then she went to an A minor. Get along list of ex lovers. They'll tell you I'm insane. To C, cause you know I love the players. And you love the games. And then to D. So all together that guitar part sounds like. So it's gonna be forever. Oh, it's gonna go down in flames. You can tell me when it's over. If the high was worth the pain. Got a long list of ex lovers. They'll tell you I'm insane. Cause you know I love the players. And you love the game. Cause you know I love the players. And you love the game. Yeah, so on You Love the Game, I think she goes to that D. Tell you I'm insane. A minor. But I've got a blank space, baby. And I'll write your name. So, okay, so yeah, so on the second part of the chorus, she doesn't go to that D. She repeats everything, but she just stays on that C. And I'll write your name. And she goes back into the uh, to that G. But I think in the first and half of I've the first half of the uh, the chorus, she does go to that D. It's worth the pain. I've got a long list of ex A minor. They'll tell you I'm insane. Cause you know I love the players. And D. you love the game. They'll tell you I'm insane. But I've got a blank space, baby. And I'll write your name. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, on the on the first half of the chorus and you love the game, she goes to the D, but then on the second half of the chorus, she stays on that C. So when she goes, I've got a blank space, baby, and now we're at your name. So she does like an abrupt stop too on baby. And I've got a blank space, baby, and now we're at your name. So it's something like that. Again, this is my first time listening to this performance, so I'm sorry if I kind of repeat myself or go over things too much, but I'm just watching her play it and trying to teach you guys how to play it like her. So sorry if it's a little redundant at parts. Cherry lips, crystal There's that muted strumming. I could show you incredible things. Stolen kisses, pretty lies. You're the king, baby. I'm your worst. It's yet to come. So, so far, that's the same chord progression, G, E minor, C, and D. Like I said, she kind of is doing that muted strumming, though. So she's doing that for sure more in that second verse now. And uh, I just love, like, the facial expressions that she has throughout her performance. Like, to me, that's what makes her an amazing performer, you know? She plays guitar, yeah, but she does, like, all these little things that culminate into this performance. And it's the facial expressions. It's like, you know, she writes her own songs, right? So she is portraying the feeling she had when she wrote that song in this performance. And a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people will just sit on the guitar and play the chords and sing the song, and it's... It's, it's there's not ever like this feeling you get from it and I think that's I think that's something that Taylor does insanely well is she knows how to like convey a feeling you know what, what was inside of her when she wrote the song and then throughout the performance she shows that she emotes it in the performance and that in my opinion that's why it makes her one of the, the best performers out there right now I can make all the tables turn rose garden filled with thorns keep you second guessing like oh my god like that. I get drunk on jealousy, but you'll come back each time you leave. Cause darling, I'm a nightmare dressed like a daydream. So it's gonna be forever. It's gonna go down in flames. You can tell me when it's over. In the house, we'll take this way too far. It'll leave you breathless. So same thing there, you know, she, she did the, the chorus part where she walks
walks down to that E minor. Then, you know, she goes to the, uh, the A minor, the C, and the D for the first half of the chorus. And then the second half of the chorus, she stays on that C. And on that C, she has that like abrupt stop too. And I will write your name. And she did a little like click with her mouth too when she stopped playing that chord, which is again, is just a, like a little, little thing, but it adds to the, to the whole performance of the song. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is what she's so good at. When she came out of that second chorus, she went to this. It's just like some hybrid picking on that G chord. And she stayed on that G chord the whole time, but she was kind of doing that, that very soft picking. And then throughout that whole, I don't, is that considered the bridge? I don't know what part that's considered, but whatever it is, like she, she slowly builds up into that crescendo and then she raises everything and goes back into that chorus. But again, like what she did there, she stayed on that G. And all I'm doing is I'm picking the sixth string, four, two, and three. And I repeat that and then I strum at the end of it. So it's like, She did something like that, but again, it's all about the dynamics of her playing, and, and that's what she is insanely good at. You know, I think a lot of like her performing abilities come from her just being a singer and songwriter. So like when you're when you're playing a song and it's nothing but you and your guitar, like you have no choice but to tell a story, right? And with a lot of pop stars these days, there's so much production and there's so many backing tracks that they can kind of rely on that for their performance. But with her starting out, you know, whenever she, I don't know how old she was when she started out. I mean, super young and I know that, I mean, a teenager. She had to somehow convey that emotion just with a guitar. And I think all of that experience that she's had throughout, you know, those, it's gotta be what, 15 plus years now, it leads to performances like that, where she can literally captivate an audience by just playing her guitar. And to me, like as someone that gigs, it's hard to explain like how tough that is. Because when you play just you and your guitar, there's nowhere to hide behind. Like there's, you can't hide behind a, a, a track or, um, you know, a loud synth or whatever it is. Like there, there's, it's just you and your guitar. So any mistake you make, it's going to be heard. And so when you play something that's that flawless, it's just, it's honestly impressive. Like that's the only thing you can say. You can just sit back and admire it. So yeah, to kind of recap guys, in terms of guitar playing, it wasn't too terrible of a song. So she played the G, an E minor, a C, and this D. She played the A minor in the chorus, and then in the chorus as well, she kind of walked down to that E minor. And then the strumming pattern throughout most of the song was pretty much the same type of rhythm. It was something like down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. played that for most of the song but then again she did some muting in there and then during that like little bridge break she did the that hybrid picking pattern so she definitely mixed it up and never fails to to impress me but yeah anyways i hope you guys like that i hope it was helpful let me know in the comment section below what other songs you think i should do this with and i will see you guys in the next video peace